Hello guys! In this video, I am going to explain to you how Loopring works. The underlying technology of Loopring is an application-specific ZK rollup protocol. As opposed to general purpose projects, being application-specific means that Loopring can focus on developing its own projects for the end users, rather than attracting developers to build on top of it like Polygon does. This in-house development allows processes to be highly optimized and ensures that products work quickly and reliably. So Loopring could be kind of like Apple on blockchain. ZK Roller protocols are widely perceived as a secure solution to the problem of high fees on Ethereum. The basic idea of a ZK Roller protocol is to avoid processing all the transactions on the Ethereum blockchain by computing them elsewhere. Only the lightweight proof of these transactions would be posted to the Ethereum network. But how does one move the computation of the transactions somewhere else? Where would this be done? And how does one ensure that the data finally posted to the Ethereum is correct? To answer all these questions, let me begin by talking about the structure that would enable this. Ethereum being the foundation would be the first layer. Loopring is to be built upon this foundation and is referred to as a second layer. Loopring layer 2, in turn, consists of two components. The first component is the open source Loopring protocol, which is a set of smart contracts deployed on Ethereum layer 1. Think of it as a connector between layer 1 and layer 2. The second component is the closed source Loopring operator. This is a code which handles everything on layer 2. Now that you hopefully understand the structure, let's answer the first question about how the computation of transactions can be moved off of the Ethereum blockchain. When you own 100 Ether, it technically means that there is a record on the Ethereum blockchain layer 1 that you indeed own 100 Ether. Let's say you want to send 100 Ether to a loop index, decentralized exchange, as transaction fees would be cheaper there. When you send the coins to Loopring, you send your funds to a smart contract created by Loopring and deployed on Ethereum. As soon as your funds arrive, the smart contract locks them up on the Ethereum blockchain layer 1, while creating an account on Loopring layer 2 with the exact same data. So by sending your funds to a Loopring smart contract, you allow your transactions to be processed on layer 2, even though your funds remain on Ethereum layer 1. The second question is, where would the transactions be processed and who would process these transactions? Well, it happens on layer 2 and is carried out by the Loopring operator, which is managed by the Loopring team. The operator is an implementation of the backend system. Let's be more specific about what exactly this operator can do and whether or not it poses a concern of Loopring being centralized. Coming back to the example, the account with your 100 Ether on layer 2 is actually a part of a Merkle tree, which is simply a data structure that records everything that happens on the Loopring protocol. Let's say you owe your friend who also uses Loopring 50 Ether and you want to send them to him. Technically, it means that your balances on the Merkle tree need to be updated. Enter the Loopring operator. It checks whether or not you have enough money to do the transaction and updates the Merkle tree by creating a rollup block. A rollup block on Loopring represents an update of the Merkle tree on layer 2 and has nothing to do with blocks on Ethereum. So it groups thousands of the latest transactions of which one is from you, sending 50 Ether to your friend. This brings us to the third question, which is how can we be sure that the operator managed by the Loopring team didn't cheat and has submitted the correct data to the Ethereum blockchain? Well, the operator needs to prove to Ethereum that its raw blocks on layer 2 are clean. To do this, it generates a cryptographic proof for every single block. This proof mathematically proves that each transaction in the block was correctly authorized by respective owners. 
and that the balances were updated in the right way. Once generated, it is submitted to a Loopring smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain. Your balance on the Merkle tree will be updated only after the smart contract verifies the submitted cryptographic proof and gives it a thumbs up. Since the smart contract is an open source code deployed on the Ethereum blockchain, the only thing we need to trust is faithful execution of this code by the Ethereum network, which is perceived to be decentralized and secure. In other words, the smart contract on Ethereum tells the Loopring operator what it is allowed to do. So ZK rollups seem to be a perfect technology. So where is the catch? Well, there are two. The first one is that the process of generating the cryptographic proof for a bundle of transactions is extremely computation intensive. The second one is an issue of a trusted setup between the smart contract on layer one and the operator on layer two. It's a set of public parameters. Think of it as the rules of a game. So the first setup of a ZK roller protocol is a centralized process. Since it's a known concern, teams who use the technology found a way to prove their innocence. To ensure that the initial setup is generated securely, Loopring team conducted a so-called trusted setup ceremony, where the setup was transparently arranged by a group of voluntary participants. If you want to learn more, I linked an article about it in the description down below. To sum up, by abstracting from Ethereum high fees while leveraging its security properties, Loopring could indeed offer some high quality products for the end users. I personally would still keep an eye on the trusted setup issue since each new version of the protocol requires conducting of a new trusted setup ceremony. And that was it for today. Thanks for watching.